G'day, my name's Mark. Um, I'm a guide here at the Alice Springs Desert Park and uh, today we're going to do another one of these videos about trees. We're going to talk about one of my favourite trees here at the Desert Park. It's one of my favourite trees in the outback all over. It's called the Red Mulga and uh, it's this one growing here. So in the courtyard as you arrive at the Desert Park we have this beautiful stand of trees um, and it's the first thing really that greets you as you come in. Um, they are a really striking tree and we're going to look at probably their key feature, the bark, where they get the red name from. Um, but if you want to see one of these in the wild, you've got a tough job in front of you because they live around, in the Northern Territory, they live around some sites around the edge of the Simpson Desert. They grow in drainages there. There's not a lot of drainages. Um, and in those drainages, they, uh, they really thrive. You get stands where you get nothing but that species, uh, but they are very prone to, uh, to fire. So um, if a fire does come through, um, it will kill them off. They'll regenerate, but they're all the same age. Um, in sites where there's no fire at all, the trees can reach enormous sizes, really huge, um, up to uh, three meter in circumference, the trunks. I've seen photographs of those ones. Uh, really amazing tree. Great tree hollows, really important for uh, biodiversity. The Simpson Desert doesn't have many trees, so a tree that has holes in it is like gold to a lot of birds. Things like owls and parrots, um, that really, really need that resource, that tree hollow. They're heavily dependent on trees like this. But um, let's get in, go a bit closer and get a look at that amazing bark. So when you get close to it, you can see the red color comes from the bark. Um, if you can see the texture of the bark here, if you come in a bit closer and you can really get a good look at it, the bark itself is curling back from the trunk. You can see it's very delicate, very paper-like, and it's curling back and uh, it's forming this kind of almost fuzzy looking effect here. Um, this gives it one of its other names, which is uh, Mini Ritchie Mulga. And uh, Mini Ritchie refers to that, that kind of curling there of the bark. Now, it is a bit of a puzzle to botanists exactly what the function of this is. It's probably got more than one function. And um, they speculate that maybe it's about transpiration. Transpiration is how a plant breathes um, and exchanges um, water vapor and air. And uh, it's thought that maybe having this layer of curly bark traps a layer of air there and helps them keep that area a little bit more moist near the trunk so they don't lose quite as much water as they're breathing. So that's one possibility. Another possibility is that it's actually possible that uh, underneath this layer, there's a, there could be a photosynthetic layer. That's what happens in some other trees around the world, like birch species. Their bark peels back and the layer of bark underneath can actually photosynthesize, so it can actually feed on light and um, so it's possible that's what's going on here as well. Um, it's possible the tree's getting a little bit more energy that way. The red color relates to a chemical in the bark that's actually a bit of a sunscreen. So it's quite common in trees, they have this kind of red color in areas where they're trying to block the UV that damages the cells, uh, but still let the visible light in that uh, is what they need to grow. So that's quite a clever function. But there's other possibilities. The curly bark, it might be to get rid of pests. So things like uh, little lerps, little insects that like to bite the plant, they'll probably have a hard time if the bark keeps peeling away underneath them. And same with mistletoe. That's a parasitic plant, and that possibly could have a hard time germinating on bark when the bark just peels away from it so easily. So there's a lot of possibilities as to what that curly bark is for. But at the end of the day, it is beautiful, isn't it? It is really, really pretty. This beautiful red color and this papery look and it makes the tree almost look hairy. It's almost like a furry tree and um, they really are quite striking. And it goes all the way from the base right up to the very tips. So the tree puts a lot of effort into that curly bark. So it's obviously very important. If you want to see one of these, good luck. Uh, there's very few sites you can see them. They do line the road between Mount Dare and New Crown Station in the southern end of the NNT, but we don't have any in any reserves. So the ones we have here at Desert Park are the only real protected ones. Um, if you want to see these, they're right by the entry to the park. So once the park opens again and we can have visitors, um, you're welcome to come in. Don't come straight in to the entry. Take five minutes to come and see these stunning trees that we've got um, at the entry to the park because they really are remarkable very, very beautiful. All right. 
Um, thanks for watching, everyone. And uh, yeah, join me again next time when uh, we'll pick another great tree to talk about. Thank you.